Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is transfer of analytical procedures as per USP 1224 chapter. In this video, we will discuss salient features of analytical method transfer. Analytical methods are critical in evaluating the characteristics of the product. Unless the method is developed and validated at the transferring unit, it is not suitable for transfer to another unit for successful execution. Let us see how the method is transferred from the originating unit to the receiving unit. Brief information on USP chapter 1224 is discussed in this video. Analytical methods. Testing to specifications is critical in establishing quality of the product. Main purpose and intent of any analytical method is to obtain consistent, repeatable and accurate results all the time. So analytical methods are critical for evaluation of the product. Incomplete and unvalidated methods are not suitable to achieve this status. Testing is done reference to a validated analytical method as per USP General Chapter 1225. Typical characteristics described in USP 1225 are precision, accuracy, specificity, detection limit, quantization limit, linearity, range and robustness. These are important items required for method validation. It is necessary that all such methods be validated before putting it into routine release testing. Transfer of analytical procedures is also called as a method transfer. It is a documented process of qualifying the receiving laboratory to use the analytical procedure that originated in another unit, that is the transferring unit. So transfer of analytical methods is between the transferring unit or originating unit and the receiving unit. You must understand that transfer is done for a validated test method only. Let us see the types of transfer. Comparative testing is one among them. Comparative testing is the most common method of transfer. Comparative testing means based on similar matrix the results obtained by both the laboratories are compared for the same lot of sample. Comparative testing method involves analyzing predetermined number of same lot by both transferring unit and the receiving unit. In this approach, a predetermined number of samples of the same lot are selected. It is recommended to carry out comparative testing on three replicates for evaluating the data statistically. For statistical evaluation of the results, it is recommended to have at least three replicates. Relative standard deviation or percent RSD of 2% may be set for establishing consistency of the data. The lower the percent RSD, better the consistency. This point should be remembered. Recovery of impurity in a spiked product is another acceptable method for comparative testing. This is another approach. Known concentration of any impurity will be spiked into the sample by the transferring unit.
the spiked sample will be analyzed at the receiving unit. Recovery means how much percentage of the added impurity is determined accurately. The recovery should be around 99% plus. The recovery percentage varies depending upon the capability of the analytical method. The more the recovery, better the analytical method. Estimation of statistical variability should also be a part of acceptance criteria for the results obtained. This should be done as per an approved protocol. All these aspects should be part of the protocol. Co-validation and revalidation. This is another approach. The transferring unit involves the receiving unit in an interlaboratory co-validation as a team member. The qualified staff from the receiving unit may be involved along with the staff of the originating unit for the method validation project. The receiving unit will be responsible for testing during the entire process of validation. This helps to assess the reproducibility of the data. The validation should be done as per USP 1225 chapter as explained in the earlier slide, that is the fourth slide. The transferring laboratory is qualified to run the analytical procedure. The originating unit is authorized to run the test because the originating unit developed the test method. Revalidation or partial validation is another approach to transfer the analytical procedure. Validating the method once again at the receiving end is also another acceptable approach. Partial validation may also be done at the receiving end depending upon the ease of executing the test method and criticality of the test method. In partial validation, it is necessary to ensure that the critical parameters of the method validation parameters are addressed. The critical parameters that may affect the transfer should be focused on partial validation. Let us see what is a transfer waiver. The conventional method transfer may be waived under the following conditions. The above described conventional transfer methods may be omitted in the following conditions. In such situations, the receiving unit is considered as capable of running the method successfully. The product composition is comparable with the existing product and the receiving unit has adequate experience in analyzing the product. The new product has comparable composition and same or similar test method and is analyzed by procedures with which the receiving unit already has good experience. The analytical method is described in USP NF. All test methods of USP NF are validated. In fact, any test method will become a part of Compendia after successful completion of validation by the originator and the data is reviewed by expert committee of USP. So, it should be noted that USP methods are already validated. That is the reason why there is a rider saying that the compendial methods need not be validated when followed exactly as prescribed. But it is necessary to carry out the verification of the test method as per USP 1226. Conceptually, this can be understood as limited or partial validation also. The analytical method is same or similar procedure in use.
the procedure that is already being practiced at the receiving end. The person who validated the analytical method is transferred to the receiving unit. This approach is also acceptable for waiver. Let us see the elements for transfer of methods. The transferring unit should provide detailed training to the receiving unit. The training should include all intricate explicit details of the analytical technique. Necessary precautions and care to be taken during the execution should be described and trained on well. All identified issues related to the test method should be part of training program. The transferring unit is responsible to provide detailed procedure, necessary reference standards and any special instructions if any. The procedure should have details of grades of reagents to be used, details of standards and test preparations, sequence of preparations, apparatus to be used, types of apparatus, usage of low actinic glassware wherever necessary, etc. Also, the transferring unit should provide valid reference standards, impurity standards, and any specific reagents required. They should also provide valid certificates for the standards. Receiving unit is responsible to provide qualified staff for method transfer. Any deviations, modifications should be discussed between transferring unit and the receiving unit. This is a GMP requirement. Any deviations to the method or changes or modifications should be discussed mutually between the originator and the receiving unit and sought out satisfactorily with scientific justification. Quality Risk Management ICHQ9 will help to identify the risk and several tools to mitigate the risk. Let us see how the transfer process occurs. There should be a detailed protocol describing the scope, roles and responsibilities of both transferring unit and the receiving unit. The transfer should be documented objective evidence. One point to note is that the protocol is a specific procedure for a specific purpose involving specific people executed within specific timelines. Even though it is a procedure, it is not called as an SOP. It should be referred only as a protocol. The protocol should describe the objective, scope, responsibilities of transferring unit and receiving unit, acceptance criteria, method of evaluation, what kind of statistical tools needed to evaluate the data, etc. There should be a provision to review and approve the protocol. The method transfer process should exactly follow as described and accepted in the protocol. The analytical procedure should be written with sufficient detail and explicit instructions. This point was discussed in earlier slide. A pre-transfer meeting discussion may be required between the transferring unit and receiving unit. This process will help to sort out any unresolved or ambiguous items in the method transfer process. A transfer report for the analytical method should be prepared by the receiving unit describing the test results obtained against the acceptance criteria. If the data is within the acceptance criteria in terms of execution, 
generation of raw data, calculations, formula, and final results, it is considered that the transfer of analytical procedure, that is TAP, is complete. I hope that the brief introduction into the method transfer is understood well. Read USP chapter 1225 for more elaborate details. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like and share. Thank you.